guys, welcome back to World of Tanks. My name is Bruce and today I want to talk about Hull Down gameplay. In this video I will explain everything you have to know in order to become a Hull Down expert. If you're interested in more reviews and gameplay, go to YouTube and search for World of Tanks with Bruce to get all of my videos or click on the subscribe button and now let's go. The first thing we have to talk about is the armor profile of different tanks. You have to become an expert of the armor profile of the tank that you are playing. And um, the important thing is there are different armor layouts. So for example, there is the, yeah, I would call it the, the classic hull down tank like the Emil 2. Um, this is the armor if the Emil 2 is standing on an even slope. However, if you are using the full gun depression, uh, for example, if you're playing on a ridge line, then uh, not only your turret is super, super strong, but also your upper hull, as you can see. Um, now there are other tanks, for example, um, some Russian heavy tanks. Let's uh, take, for example, the IS-7. The IS-7 does not have too much gun depression, so only six degrees. So you will not be able to play on a ridge line with your IS-7. Um, as you can see, there's not much that changes uh, that changes with the IS-7 if you are using the gun depression. Um, however, that is not a problem for this tank. I mean, you will not be able to work a ridge line like in an Emil 2. However, the armor profile is super, super strong even if you are standing on an even surface, as you can see. So with, with uh, such a tank, you will be able to play um, in a city and just hide behind some cover. Um, however, you will not be able to work the ridge line and we'll come to this later on. And then there are tanks, for example, like the French heavy tank, um, the MX-50B. Um, which is an, which is also a heavy tank. However, um, as you can see, it does not have any armor. It does have quite some gun depression, as you can see. However, you will not be able to work a ridge line um, because of the lack of your armor on your turret. So, um, what I wanted to, to um, yeah, what I want to um, tell you is. Take a look at the armor profile of your tank and understand the armor profile. This is the first thing that you need to be aware of um, if you want to play hull down. Another super important thing is to differentiate between the nominal armor of your tank and the effective armor. So uh, as I explained in some other videos, you can see the nominal armor if you click on the, this collision tab, then you see the nominal armor. However, what you should keep in mind is that your tank does have an effective armor depending on the angle um, and basically on the ridge line that you are playing. So for example, um, the Progetto 66, this is the armor profile of the tank and as you can see, the lower part is pretty, pretty weak. So even the upper hull can be penetrated from let's say, most of the tier 8 tanks. However, if you are using your full gun depression, then the armor profile becomes super, super strong. As you can see, now the upper hull of your tank as well as the turret is basically um, impenetrable, not only for tier 8 tanks, but also for tier 9 and even for tier 10 tanks if they are not using premium ammunition. So this is super important for you to keep in mind. In this guide, I want to concentrate on how to play hull down at a ridge line. So for doing this, as I said, you need to have a tank with a strong turret armor. And in this guide, I want to present to you three, let's say, classes of tanks um, that are just that have a different armor layout and that is important for you to understand. So the first class is the Centurion 1. As you can see, the Centurion 1 does have a super strong turret. However, it does have basically no armor whatsoever on the hull. The upper hull is super weak as well as the lower hull. So this is the first class and this tank is um, pretty difficult to play um, using hull down or playing hull down. So the next class of tank would be the Centurion 5.1, so the premium version of the Centurion 1. And as you can see, this tank does also have a very strong turret. The hull is pretty weak, except if, you, if you're using your um, gun depression. And if you're using your gun depression, as you can see, the upper hull armor is super, super strong as well. So, so for me, this is like the second class of tanks. 
or the, the, the second class of hull down tanks because it does not only have a strong turret it also does have a super strong upper hull however the lower hull is pretty weak and then there's the third class of tanks and this is for me the tanks for example tanks like the uh, t26e4 super pershing as you can see this tank does have a strong turret yes i know it does have some weak spots but this is not the uh, the point i want to make in this video it does have a super strong turret it does also have a, a super strong upper hull and it also does have a super strong lower hull um, so um, this with this tank playing hull down is actually super easy because no matter how much um, you expose of your tank you are super you have super super strong armor um, throughout the frontal part of your tank so from your lower hull up until your um, turret so um, those are three different tanks and um, you should consider this and we'll see how this affects your hull down gameplay in uh, a little theory session now before we talk about some theory there are three basic things that you have to know in order to be able to play hull down correctly first of all you have to know the amount of gun depression of your tank and of the tank that you are fighting against and we'll come to this in a second the next thing is you have to know the armor profile of your tank and we talked about the armor profile quite a bit right now the third thing you have to know is the thickness of your effective armor depending on the gun depression of the slope of the terrain also depending on the gun depression and the slope um, of the terrain and um, as you saw with the Progetto 66 this can make quite a difference and now let's talk about the theory of playing hull down all right so let's now take a look at some theory behind playing hull down and I think this is super important for you to understand because sometimes you will get shot in a tank like the Centurion 1 and you might not understand how this could be because you actually um, try to hide your turret. So in this situation or this uh, little presentation, um, I will show you two different tanks. I will show you a ridge line, as you can see here, and I will show you this black line, which is kind of the horizon line. And then I will show you on the tank the red line which indicates that this armor is uh, so strong that you will not be able to penetrate it so in this case it's the centurion one as we saw it um, it does have a super strong turret armor however the hull armor is super weak as you can see here this is the upper hull armor and this is the lower hull armor and those indicators here show you which part is visible um, basically everything above the horizon line is visible to the to the other tank if he only shows um, the turret and the red bar or red line behind the horizon line is basically the part of the tank that is not visible um, to the other tank. So in this case, pretty much um, both Centurions are playing hull down, only exposing their turret. So if both tanks would shoot at the other tank, um, both would only be able to hit the turret of the other tank and in this case um, as the Centurion 1 does have a super strong turret armor they would not be able to penetrate the other tank so let's take a look at the um, at the next picture Th this is what I just um, explained both Centurion 1s are staying hull down and only, only showing their turrets now in this situation if you would try to hit the upper hull or the lower hull of the other centurion you would need to um, let's say drive out of cover and this would mean that you would expose not only your turret armor but also your um, hull armor to the other tank so if you have two tanks that have the same amount of gun depression so in this case two centurions with 10 degrees of gun depression and if the armor profile of both tanks is the same then you will not be able to hit the enemy weak spots so what i mean is the upper hull or the lower hull without exposing your tank and that is super important for you to understand so in a tank like the like the centurion one you cannot just move out of cover because you will always expose um, your weak hull to the enemy if you have the same amount of gun depression and um, um, the same armor profile so what happens if you are playing in the centurion 5-1 as you can see the centurion 5-1 does have a super strong turret just like the centurion but it also has 
um, a strong upper hull, at least if you're if you're using your gun depression. So in this case, the Centurion 5.1 um, can move out of cover. Yes, he will expose the upper hull to the Centurion playing hull down. However, this is not a problem because the upper hull is also very strong in the Centurion. So if the Centurion 5.1 meets the meets or plays against the Centurion 1, then the Centurion then the sorry the Centurion 5 one does have a strong advantage because he can move out of cover further than the Centurion 1 can do. So in this case, the Centurion 1 is always in a disadvantageous situation um, and he will basically have no chance against the Centurion 5 one That is super important for you to understand. So in this case, playing Hull Down will not work because um, the Centurion 1 would have to hit the lower hull of the Centurion 5-1, so we would have to expose his um, his upper hull as well as his lower hull in a situation where the ridge line is equal and uh, both tanks, as I said, do have the same amount of gun depression. Now in a tank like the Super Pershing, which does have a super strong turret as well as a good upper hull armor as well as a good lower hull armor, he can expose basically all of his tank um, in order to get a shot on the on the Centurion 1 in this case. So the better the armor profile of your tank is, the easier it is for you to, to play hull down. If you're playing in a tank like the Centurion 1, then it is super tough for you and you have to understand this. So the only chance where the Centurion 1 can peek out against such a tank is after the other tank has shot and um, during the reload, the Centurion 1 could move out of cover without having to fear to take a shot from the other tanks. This is super, super important for you um, to understand. And um, now let's talk about gun depression. Um, the previous examples were always uh, between tanks with uh, the same amount of gun depression. And in this example, we have one tank with um, a very low amount of gun depression. This is the object 413, for, uh, sorry, 416. Um, with only three degrees of gun depression. So in this case, the Centurion 1 does have an advantage because if the ridge line, let's say, dictates 10 degrees of gun depression, but the tank only has three degrees of gun depression, then as you can see, yes, you have the horizon line, basically for the Centurion 1. However, there's this dashed line, which is the, yeah, you could call it the, let's say the, the, the gun horizon line or so, uh, meaning that the, op the play of the object 416 with only 3 degrees of gun depression can only shoot down to this line. So everything below this line will not be hit by this tank, cannot be hit due to the lack of gun depression. So in this case, the Centurion can move further out of cover because he will not be exposed to the line of fire of the object 416. So basically the... Um, the thing that is important to, to notice is that if you have a tank which has a very low amount of gun depression, for example um, the Russian heavy tanks, as I told you the, the IS-7 for example, then you, are, then you have a disadvantage um, playing hull down because of this problem right here. Now um, as you can see, um, if the Centurion would stay um, behind uh, behind the ridge line, then um, in order to hit the Centurion's lower hull, the object 416 would have to completely move out of cover, so he would definitely expose every weak spot of his armor, um, so he just cannot do this. The only way this tank can move out of cover is if it is um, a super, super um, strongly armored tank, which does have not only a, a strong um, a strong turret armor, but also a strong upper hull and also a strong lower hull. So this is the only uh, possibility for this tank to move out of cover. Now, um, at the end, those are the most important things or those are the, the important things that you have to keep in mind. First of all, if you have a strong turret and a strong hull, like on the Super Pershing, then it's very easy. You just don't care, you just move out of cover. The perfect example for this would be the Object 279E, um, this completely overpowered tank that is basically, that, which basically has such a strong armor that you will most likely not penetrate it whatsoever. Um, if you have a strong turret on your tank, and a strong upper hull, like on the Centurion 5.1, you can move out of cover against tanks with a weak turret and with tanks um, and against tanks that have a strong turret but a weak upper hull. You will have an advantage um, every time. 
If you have a strong turret but a weak hull like on the Centurion 1, you can only move out of cover against tanks with a weak turret or tanks with, yeah, basically tanks with a weak turret. Um, so that is, that limits the the ways in which you can play hull down and you have to keep this in mind. This is super, super important. If you have more gun depression than your enemy, you can move out of cover further without having to fear enemy shots. And if you have less gun depression than your enemy, then the opposite is true. So this is the theory behind playing hull down that you have to keep in mind. And now let's take a look at some gameplay. All right, here we are in the game that I want to show you in our Centurion 1. We are starting on Westfield and on this map usually with a, with a medium tank, especially with fast medium tanks, you want to go either to the center, so to the F, let's say F6 uh, position or to the K0 position um, and win the southern flank. However, in the Centurion 1 and with its ability to play hull down, I want to go to the north and I want to support um, the heavy tanks and the good thing about the Centurion 1 as I um, showed you in the um, on tanks GG showing the armor profile is that with this turret we can even fight against tier 10 tanks and even tier 10 tanks will have problems penetrating our turret if they are not using uh, premium ammunition so let's see how it goes now one thing to mention is um, I explained the theory with two tanks using um, the same amount of um, yeah of uh, um, slope um, but obviously if um, only I play hull down against another tank which is not standing hull down then obviously I have a um, I'm yeah I'm in a, a in a advantageous situation um, and I can um, fight against him and um, I would not have to worry about taking any damage whatsoever but um, the theory was for um, two tanks both being in a hull down situation so exactly what we will see right here on Westfield and this is why I think that this is a great example um, on how to play hull down in a tank like the Centurion 1 so um, as I explained to you, we will try to not expose our tank too much and um, so the first thing is I I will try to spot the enemy tanks at the rear of the map and I will try to take them under fire um, and I will not concentrate on the tanks that are fighting on the ridge line as the Kranwagen for example or the Kanaven because I would have to expose my tank too much and I would get uh, and I would um, have to fear to take enemy shots so all right, looks like the enemy T95 has advanced into position and that is super bad for us because uh, as soon as we expose our tank to fight against the Carnarvon or the T28 prototype at the, rear, at the rear of the map, we will be exposed to the T95 so um, that is obviously a thing that we don't want to do because uh, we don't want to take um, about 750 damage from the T95. Um, with our silver ammunition we will not be able to penetrate him. Um, I don't even think that we can penetrate the cupolas, um, however we can at least track him and we need the artillery to finish him off, that is the good thing. And um, the other good thing is due to the positioning of our T57 Heavy he will not be able to further advance because then he will uh, get side shots from the either the T57 Heavy or the Kanon Jagdpanzer 105. But looks like our artillery is doing a great job, we also pinged the map and as soon as the T95 is dead we can continue to make pressure. So far the game does not look too good, however as long as we are holding this position um, we will definitely not lose the game. So let's see, I'm uh, constantly watching if uh, the Carnarvon or the Defender are advancing because then we would need to turn around. Um, and let's see, only 60, 65 hit points remaining so we need one more artillery shot to finish off the T95 and then we can concentrate on playing her down once again. Meanwhile, it looks like our medium tanks at least have won the K0 position, which is nice. Here you go. Here you go. Uh, we'll see what the enemy ELC E90 is doing there. Okay, looks like the Object 430U is advancing and as long as I am only showing my turret, he will not have a chance to penetrate us as long as he's using his silver ammunition. At least he will have a a hard time doing so. Okay, maybe we can uh, play her down against the Kranwang. Ah, okay. Should have stopped there because I had a chance to uh, get a shot on his lower hull. Let's see, maybe on the 
Here you go. Super nice job of the E75. And let's see. Okay, he's falling back, so... Um, Alright, looks like the enemy E75 has advanced, so you know what, let's uh, concentrate on him. And it uh, looks like he is focusing our TDs, so that is the chance for us to just um, to just uh, concentrate on him. And as long as he's not turning around, I don't even worry about um, picking up too much. And we can just farm him. Super, super nice. Alright, looks like we could turn around the game. Nice. And now the defender is doing what I explained to you in the little theory session. Um, he does not have enough gun depression to work solid on a ridge line, so he he will have to expose his tank, also his lower hull, and so um, he um, is taking damage. Okay, let's see. Um, looks like we cannot penetrate the object for 30 U because he is uh, side scraping very nicely. However, nine to five looks like we are winning the game. Nice. And obviously in a tier 10 matchup with a tier 8 tank you will not be uh, number one on damage. Uh, that is just how it is. See, as you can see we are bouncing his shot because we are only showing our turret. That is super super important with this tank. Yeah, it looks like looks like we cannot um, penetrate him. So let's see, maybe we can make some pressure in the city. Oh, nice. Here you go. The defender is advancing in the city. He's doing actually the same mistake, just like the E75. And you know what? We will just advance and we'll just um, um, circle him and see if we can make some damage. As you can see, I'm waiting until I am um, at the rear of his turret because um, with auto aim, you are always aiming at the middle of the tank. And um, in this case, it is the. The, um, yeah, the height is basically where the turret is and if I shoot at the side of the turret I will not even penetrate the turret of the defender but we could uh, take out the enemy defender which is nice and now it is just a question of, of making even more damage because the game is is the game looks or well, appears to be won maybe we can support the E75 I think he deserves it because he has done a very, a very nice job here you go Telling him that I will support him, and now let's see if we can track him. Here you go, we can get a track shot. Okay. Fortunately, he is using his repair kit. Okay, get a shot. Uh, unfortunately, we bounce the object 430U. That would have been great because um, he could take out the enemy. Um, the uh, Sorry, our E75. And we can get a nice tracking shot on the um, P44 Pantera. Nice. Now I'm actually making a mistake because I should have taken another tracking shot. Uh, but now he can fall back into cover. Um, but I mean, that's alright. That is alright. Nice. And he's taken out by the Leopard PTA. And yeah, we collected 1,600 damage, um, 1,000 spotting damage. So this is what you can do. This is the power of um, a hull down tank, even in a even in a low tier scenario. And um, yeah, as you saw, if you know what to do and if you have understood the theory behind playing hull down and if you know the armor profile of your tank then your tank can really be super strong in a in a hull down situation not only against um against um ta tanks if you are in a ta tank uh, but also against higher tiers uh, even against uh, tier 10 tanks so this is the, the strength of playing hull down all right guys that was it for today with my hull down guide I hope this video helps you out to understand how to use different tanks playing hull down. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. Consider subscribing to my channel and I see you next time in another World of Tanks video.